As you can see today, we have our brand new Tech Tips set. We've got our completely new background. And in keeping with our more modern urban theme today, the cameraman is going to be giving me mad props for today's episode. Ah uh, yes, there are my props. Today's episode is gonna be about binning and what that means in the context of the computer industry. So binning is the process where a manufacturer, like say for example, AMD, takes two identical processors and then is able to sell them at a completely different price as a completely different product. We're gonna talk about why the manufacturers do it, what the benefit is to them, and what the benefit is to us, the consumer. So the reason I started with the CPU example of binning is because the entire CPU industry is basically all about binning. So I mentioned that AMD might take two of exactly the same piece of silicone. So they produce a whole batch, they produce it exactly the same way, and maybe one of them turns into an X4965 processor. This is a premium quad core processor, it's their highest clocked quad core. So they take that one, they test it, they say, oh, this one runs really good. So they put that in bin A, and that's where the name binning comes from. And then they take maybe one that doesn't run quite as well because it runs at a nice high speed, but maybe two of the cores don't really match the power targets that they're aiming for or the voltage targets. Well, that becomes an X2555. That goes in bin B, that goes in the value bin. And something that customers don't always remember is that when you're producing a precision manufactured, precision engineered part like a CPU, some of them go in bin C, some of them go right in the garbage. So it's much the same way that, you know what, yeah, these both cost the same to produce. Just like a tank of gasoline costs exactly the same to produce as the sludge left at the bottom, but it's gonna cost a lot more to put gasoline in your tank than sludge because you can only get so many of these and you have to produce a whack load of chips in order to actually get them. Now CPUs aren't the only thing where we see extensive binning. RAM's another great example. So this is a Corsair Dominator kit of memory. These can be binned for speed and low latency and you know what? Voltage is not that big of a concern. So these go in bin A. These are a premium enthusiast performance part. Now this, this is a G-Skill Eco kit of memory. It doesn't run quite as fast, but what it is been for is low voltage. So they take that whole batch of chips and they go, okay, well these ones are, are high speed, high performance, they consume more power, but that's okay. So that goes to an enthusiast guy. Whereas this one runs at low volts, it uses very little power and runs at a decent speed. That goes into bin B, that's a value part. So that is another example of how binning works in the computer industry. A Couple more examples are gonna be video cards. Video cards can be been for many of the same characteristics. So frequency, power, uh, voltage that they run at, the amount of heat that they output, these are all very important things. You can also see this even in SSDs. OCZ had an SSD called the Vertex Turbo. The only difference was that the controller that does the calculations ran a little bit faster than the regular Vertex. In fact, even your cell phone probably has a processor that underwent a binning process at some point or another. So the real objective of the video today is to explain what all of this means and potentially how you can take advantage of it. So AMD would have very tight targets, very tight guidelines for something like a premium product, an X4965. So they're gonna say, okay, it has to run at this voltage, it has to consume only this much power, it has to output only this much heat. So maybe you get a chip that actually runs at the same speed, runs with the same number of cores, but maybe it needs a little more voltage, or maybe it kicks off a little bit more heat. That's where overclocking comes in. That's why you can buy an X2 or an X3 processor, you can unlock cores, you can turn up the frequency. Maybe you have to put a better heat sink on it, but that's, well, that's the trade-off. There's also a little bit of luck involved. You know, maybe I buy a kit of Corsair Dominator, and maybe I buy a kit of, you know, no heat spreaders, no, no fancy marketing, and maybe they run at the same speed, or maybe they don't. So binning gives you the benefit of being able to either pay a premium for a product that you know is going to run real fast or you can buy a more value oriented product and you can save a few bucks and hey maybe you'll get lucky too. So hopefully that's explained what binning is in the computer industry and I hope you learned something today.